Die gebrek aan een plaaslijke markt vir die wettige verkoop van Daga dwing licentiehouders om ooreenkomste met buitenlandse maatschappijen aan te gaan en geen waarde toevoeging kan op plaaslijke boerderij plaasvind nie. Bij my in die atelier is Myrtle Clark en Silas Howard om meer hieroor te gesels. Hallo guys. Hello. Myrtle, I, I want to chat to you. There's, there's still some confusion around what the Constitutional Court judgment actually said. Uh, give us a better idea. Um, trade in cannabis remains completely illegal. So that's the most important thing to know. There's nobody can buy or sell, share or gift uh, uh, cannabis according to the law. So the grey area is in the word privacy. Mm. So we are allowed to possess, uh, cultivate um, and but not trade within private spaces, mm -hmm. which doesn't necessarily mean your home, but it means any space where the, there's no access for the general public. So, Silas, uh, my question then is, so we're not allowed to trade, but there's immense excitement about the size of this industry. So, uh, from your perspective, what makes you so excited? Well, I mean, the cannabis industry itself is is certainly booming, and it, it, it's completely massive. It, it's the, there's so much more to cannabis um, than, than just the plant itself and, and maybe just the recreational side of cannabis. There's, there's, there's the health side of cannabis, of course. You know, there's oils. There's so many different facets to the cannabis industry. Of course, there's the agricultural side of the cannabis industry. And then right through to hemp. Um, you know, there's that suits and clothes and, and textiles, all sorts of things being made from hemp as well. So, so actually the cannabis industry as a whole is, is incredibly broad and it's, it is a very, very exciting space to be in at the moment. Myrtle, the, the Cannabis Expo was held in Cape Town, if I'm right. So uh, tell us about the, Expo, uh, about the Expo and what, what surprised you about it? Um, the amazing, amazing vibe and how excited people were at the potential for the, for the cannabis industry. As we were saying earlier, uh, at the end of the four days, we didn't have any voices left. Uh, the excitement with, uh, that the people had, the types of questions, the insightful questions that we got at our stall. Um, I was very lucky to be able to speak all, uh, every day in the four days of the expo and, and this audience just packed the space in and asked amazing questions afterwards. So so I think that the, the, the excitement and the potential was the main yeah. thing that stood out for us. So um, Silas, give me an idea of the, the types of businesses that actually went to the expo. So, so we've got everything from all the different um, facets of the industry. So, of course, now with the constitutional court ruling, you can now legally grow cannabis at home or in private, as Myrtle says, um, if you're an adult for, for personal consumption. But how do you grow cannabis? You know, a lot of people don't really know how best to grow their cannabis. So there's an entire industry around that from, um, from the actual growing side. There's people with home growing kits, with lights, with there's, there's companies that specialize just in fertilizer specifically for growing cannabis and soil specifically for growing cannabis. So, so the growing side is, 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 is you know, there's, there's many different um, companies represented there, people, uh, cannabis entrepreneurs um, with products from the, the agricultural side, but then of course the health side. We've mm. got from big pharmaceuticals, uh, Go Life International, our, our headline partner, um, right through to to uh, people with with oils. With there's so yeah. many different incredible uh, benefits to to cannabis, and so many products that that uh, utilize it. It's often that the medicinal part to it is, is where the, the controversy comes in. And, and that's why government says to us, no, 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 uh, we'll regulate it by um, uh, assigning licenses to certain individuals. Myrtle, what happens in, in that space? You guys aren't that happy with that. Uh, the word license is the bane of our lives. <laughs> it really is because everybody wants to know from us in our website inbox, how do I get a license? How do I get a license? So when it comes to cannabis medicine and you're looking at a standardized product product with a barcode that is making a claim. Now to make a claim with cannabis, as Silas was saying, it, it's such, cannabis is such a broad uh, uh, subject and there are so many different types of cannabis that it's very, very and difficult to yeah. standardize it and, and actually make a claim. You know, there's all sorts of claims that cannabis is going to save the world, it's going to cure your cancer and everything in between, which is not really true. So you have to be very good at what you do to make that claim. Mm. So in order to 
produce medicinal cannabis like that with a barcode, you need a license and that is absolutely fine. Mm. But as far as we're concerned, outside of the medical sphere, outside of a standardized product, there should never ever be a requirement for a license. A business registration, Yes, mm. uh, a registration with a co-op or a club or a hub or something like that. Yes, that could work because this is going to be a regulated industry, but it is not an industry that the government is going to be able to control. So the so government says, I want to control it because that means I can actually tax it. Tax. Surely that, that, that seems right. Government should be able to tax it. Absolutely. Um, and you can see in the different states in America, in Canada, um, in different countries where they have properly legalized um, cannabis, the you know, from a recreational point of view as well as from from the medicinal side, the certainly the the tax dollars are mm. are pouring in, and and the benefit to the the economies is 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 being shown across the board. Yeah. So apart from that, government should provide some form of support. And yes. uh, are, are you guys in um, in in support of government support? And if so, in what way? Yes, well, you know, in drug policy circles, uh, there's a saying that says that the success of a country's drug policy can be measured by the size of its black market. Mm. So right now, uh, we are championing the existing cannabis industry because people often think, oh, this is something new. This is something exciting. Yes, well, it is exciting, but it's nothing new. We've been doing this for 700 years. So what we need government to do is to recognize that South Africa is full of people who already know how to grow cannabis, who already know how to make cannabis medicine, who have been using cannabis medicines for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. So recognize us first. Mm -hmm. Give us the BEE of cannabis mm -hmm. in South Africa so that we can take this industry forward from where it is. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. So um, the government certainly has a role to play. And I think that government do have the appetite because we're right in the middle of this huge corruption scandals. And if you create a license system that is broad based for all different applications of cannabis, you're going to have the same corruption yeah. because somebody is going to offer you a license for the money in your okay. pocket. Let's talk about the export market. In order to be able to export something into an international market, there you have to have some unique selling proposition. I want to challenge you on that. So is South African um, cannabis so unique that there's actually an international market for our product and a range of products associated to it? It's not necessarily the cannabis that's unique here, but we as a country have got the perfect environment to grow and, and also extract from cannabis. We've got a, a cheap labor market, we've got land for days, um, and, and, and we're a continent of farmers quite frankly. So uh, you look across our borders in Lesotho, even Zimbabwe um, are, are pushing ahead with, with um, legislation and, and actually allowing um, big, big companies to come in, um, international uh, healthcare companies coming in, investing a lot of money in um, big grow operations. There is certainly a huge, huge opportunity for us here in South Africa um, to, to actually benefit from this. Agriculture should be a perfect, um, um, or cannabis and agriculture is a perfect thing to create, create jobs. Are there certain regions in South Africa that are more suited for this? Uh, yes, I think, and it's all, it's all water dependent. Mm. You know, we have this big line that goes across South Africa that divides the east and the west of the country from the dry and the wet areas. And I'd just like to beg to differ a bit, a bit with Silas. Our African cannabis strains, which are called land race strains, mm. are unique in the world. And they are the subject of much speculation. We actually have a seed expert from the Netherlands arriving uh, tomorrow to visit us, and he's very, very interested in our land race strains because there are certain properties that have developed over the years that are unique in the world. Certain alkaloids that you find in African um, endemic cannabis uh, that, that are unique and I think that the Department of Agriculture would be do really well to look into that and into the preservation of our land race strains. Silas, the, uh, the next expo, when is it? So it's actually coming up from the 6th to the 9th of June in Durban. Um, and then we've got a huge uh, expo coming up, the Cannabis Expo at the Santon Convention Center at the end of November. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Ons neem een vinnige breek en gesels net hierna met François Joubert oor entrepreneurskap en die belangrikheid van goeie netwerke vir kleinsake eienaars. Blijf waar jy is.